Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and this is the All Roads Project. And when I need a quilt quilted, this is how I do it. Wow, that worked out well. I invited a special guest, Angela Walters. I pieced, I quilt, and we're gonna show you how to make the All Roads Quilt from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Now don't forget, Plus, June 18th is the quilt walk. I'm actually going to be giving this quilt away. You could win this quilt! So if you're in Liberty, Missouri, be sure to check it out. Oh, June 18th. be sure and check it out. We'll see you later. Hi, everybody. It's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. And if you can tell by the look on my face, we are already laughing and joking around up here. I am here today with Angela Walters from Hi. Quilting is My Therapy. And oh my gosh, we have so much fun together. We do. We do. They don't even have the cameras rolling and we're just no, up here hamming it up. And we are hamming it up. <laughs> so we've got a quilt to teach you today. It's called All Roads. This is Angela's pattern and you can get that on our website or any place good patterns are sold, I, I, I guess. guess so, yeah. I guess so. Anyway, it's a great quilt to uh, to show you and to talk about. This is the quilt right here. And you'll notice it is not quilted. Guess why? Because Angela's here, and Angela is the queen of quilting. Just like you're so, the queen of piecing. Right? I'm the queen of quilting. That's right. I would say she I'm the quilt quilting, anything but. and make it beautiful, and uh, and that's what she does. She oh, loves it. Thank you. You have a shop down in Liberty. I do. So one of my claims to fame is we're only 45 minutes from you. Right. So it's kind because of because all roads lead to Hamilton, and one of those roads is hers. <laughs> yep. Yep. Right? So just right up 35. That's right. Nice little drive. <laughs> yeah. And so it's a nice little shop too. I've been there. Thank lots. you. It's you have. Gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, we've actually ran into each other at Walmart. We have before. I'm like, oh, there's Quilt the Con. Yeah, Quilt Con. Yeah, we run it, and all the all the places quilters go. Yes, and where they don't go too. Where, and where they don't go. I'm like, I saw Jenny's face in a, in a truck going by. I think she's around here. Oh yeah, that no. People <laughs> always drive up to the truck and they're like, ah, oh, that's not her. <laughs> nope. The not poor her. driver. He probably gets like, oh great, I'm disappointing women left and right. <laughs> uh, it's probably true. Probably true. Anyway, one of the things I loved about this pattern, of course, is that it's made with pre-cuts. Yes. And you know, I love to do pre-cuts, and so I was like, ooh, can we do this? Mm -hmm. And I'll make the pieces, and you can do the quilting, and uh, and because it's her pattern, she's actually going to talk us through the pieces as well. So to make this quilt, you're going to need one package of 10-inch squares, and we have used Sunshine by Jason Yenter for In mm -hmm. the Beginning Fabrics. You're going to need about three and three-quarter yards of a background, and I used, for part of mine, I did use a layer cake, and they're about three yards, so ish, because the other ones, you're just cutting uh, two and a half by four and a half and two and a half by eight and a half rectangles out of for the block. And then no border. Uh, I don't like piecing borders, yeah. so most of my quilts don't have them. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Anyway, I'm a border girl, so uh, so you know, whatever we, whatever you want to do. You can add borders to it. Borders is going to be about a yard and a half, and, uh, and then you want backing that's big enough for the quilt. And let's see how much we need for that. Four and a half yards. And so let's see what makes a quilt that is 72 by 84. So this is a pretty good size quilt. For sure. My husband's really tall, and so I was trying to make quilts that would actually cover him up. That's right. <laughs> I'm a big quilt maker as well. All right, so to make this quilt, what we're going to do is we're going to take, you're going to pull out of your pack two squares that are the same, mm -hmm. a print, one of solid, mm -hmm. and then we are going to do the easy eight method out of this. Yep. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a line diagonally corner to corner. Do you use any uh, special drawing tools, or are you like me with whatever's handy? Um, the closest thing to me. That's me usually. too. Yeah, me too. Because yeah. I, I have my special tools, but they're usually like over there, and I don't want to get. I do find up. I'm a real lazy sewer. Me too. You know? See, I love that we have this in common. Right. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew a quarter of an inch on both sides of these lines. You guys have seen me do this a lot. But you do it and... so well. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is oh, that. <laughs> that almost scared me when you started. I was like, oh gosh. Yeah, Very this quick. is a fast machine. You know, I was one of those who pulled my fabrics and pedaled to the metal. And when I got a machine that was actually fast enough for me, I, I didn't have to do that anymore. You were like, oh, but I like pulling it through the backside of it. I'm like, wait, this actually goes the way, <laughs> the speed of my brain. <laughs> Nothing goes the speed of your brain. Ugh, there is that. And I always thought Not they sped time. up the video while you were sewing, but no, <laughs> that is just you. <laughs> That is true. So now we're going down this last side. And nice, impressive. We're done. So now what we're going to do is we are going to cut this in half both directions. And I like to cut where there's no lines first. And then because I have lines on the other ones, so mm, get the hardest part out right, of the way first. Right. Smart. Secrets of Jenny's well, quilting. Well, and. If I mess this up, then I have the lines. True. Right? True. Will you grab me the block lock ruler? It's in that first drawer. Yes. I 
get to be like your assistant. Right? We're going to have you doing all the work for sure. I can do that. Now, how, how do you usually square your blocks? You Jenny, <laughs> I'm like the opposite of most quilters. I pay people to piece the top and bind it so there I can quilt it. So how I normally square is I will um, have somebody else do it. But oh, nice. I, I could do it if I have to. You want me to oh. press this for you? Press them open, yeah. How do you press? I press to the dark side. Okay, good. I was hoping, please don't say it seems open. I, I could. I would no, for you, but no, I, it's I'm not, not my... that. You know what? And my theory on that is if anybody ever looks inside to see which way I press, they're <laughs> not my friend. So I learned you how know. to quilt from my husband's grandpa, and he learned from his mom back during the Depression. Mm -hmm. He told me you didn't have to press the seams because they were on the inside of the quilt. Excellent. It was like years before I actually pressed any seams. It was so. years before I actually squared blocks. My <laughs> it does brain, help. My brain couldn't make head nor tail of it, and, um, and then once I figured out what I was doing, then I was okay. But, you know, in the meantime, it was a little tough for me. So these, we want these to be four and a half so that everything lines up. Yep. And so these should be really close, like, look how close that is. But we're just going to go ahead and trim them up. Beautiful. Like this. And I always put my words on the background. That's how I remember it, because I'm angrily nice. challenged. Nice. So we're just going to cut these. And I'm just going to cut a few of them and square them up, because I have more cut already. So again. I like this, the swipe. Whoosh. Yeah. <laughs> and that noise, mm -hmm. that noise drives some people crazy. It's like uh, fingernails on a chalkboard. No. That's and the sound me, of like, success. Right? Sound of like, whoosh. I like it. All right. So I have a bunch cut right here. Out of this second print block, we're going to cut that into four, uh, four and a half inch squares, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. I'm asking you because I'm not great at pattern reading. I'm a good <laughs> reader, but I just, uh, you know, I'm kind of like a, I quilt by picture. Oh, you know, <laughs> there's some that do that. You show me a spreadsheet or like a, a graph, bar graph, and I'm not paying attention. I go for the pictures too. That's right. That's right. I think that's true with a lot of us. This is a little bit hard for me to see, so I'm just going to... Is it because I'm watching you? Because I cannot look. No. <laughs> it's always harder when somebody's like over your shoulder. No, it's because it's dark on the <laughs> board below it. And so then I'm going to stack these Perfect. and cut them into four and a halfs again. This is probably the most important part about the pattern. You want to have the two matching print squares because they make two blocks all together. Right. I mean, it would work. It just would look a little bit more oh, patchworky, more, more scrappy, yeah. organic. Whatever. All right. So we've got these. We've got our these, our half square triangles. They have a name, and then this is this is the block that we are working on. This is the beginning of it. Yep. So a couple of the half square triangles get special treatment. Yep. They're like the divas of the group. So you're going to give them a little extra boundary around them to separate them from the rest. So we're going to make one of these and I'm going to turn this the direction that it wants to go in my brain, Perfect. which is up to the left. And basically we're going to take a two and a half inch strip and we're going to cut two and a half by four and a half inch per pieces like this. And we're going to border it so it's really special. Mm -hmm. It yep. gets its own it's like, frame. It's like, look at me. All right, like this. Yep. We're just going to lay these on here, so a quarter of an inch on both sides, and mm -hmm. then put our top pieces on and sew it. Yep. And we have one right here that's done. Perfect. And then we're going to lay this block out. Yep. And so this background kind of makes that look like it's floating. That was it really the illusion does. I was going with. So that's why a solid works really good as a background, or uh -huh. some kind of tonal. I wouldn't do anything too crazy, big print, but then you have this one special one, but it now it needs the rest of its adoring pieces to make the block. That's right. That's right. All right. So the adoring pieces go how? Good like question. This one? <laughs> they go the same angle. So the corners are going to go the same angle as the first one. The corners. Okay, mm -hmm. this way. Yep. And so this one's going to go opposite because everyone has to be a little difficult. Right. But then we have some gaps in between, right? And that's where our that's little where our pieces will go. go yep. here. Mm -hmm. And then this one comes in. Yep. Yep. And we'll put another of the print pieces. Right here. Yep. Like that. Yeah. And so it kind of creates that weird kind of cut off chevron, that little half square And triangle. is that it? We're done? That's the block. All right. You know what? I'm going to sew these together. Go for it. So we can finish this whole block and show everybody. And I have some more blocks done over here so that we can show how it, how it fits together and makes the pattern. And I like this because you make them two at a time. So you kind of, if you only have time to make a couple blocks, and then you're like, well, only two more. And then That's two more. True. And next thing it's midnight and you're, you know. Yeah, and, and I should mention that for sure because when you cut these pieces, you're literally cutting for two blocks. Mm -hmm. So that is really, uh, really fun and efficient. All right. Now, if you want to press I that, can do that, then I will press, sew these together right here, and I'm going to pick them up just how they go. 
because I, do you tend to get things turned around if you're not really careful? Yes. Hence, the reason I don't piece a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I develop mantras, I'm like you're like not even pinning, the and they're all the perfect. End. Look at that oh, beautiful. Perfect you know that points. either drives people crazy or they're totally relieved that I don't pin. It's oh, I don't pin, no. but I don't pin, and it looks bad. You don't pin, and it looks good. <laughs> all right, is that right? Almost. Let me press it real quick. I'm press it. Look how good she is at pressing. I've been practicing. I was like, okay, I got to be ready for my big moment. There you go. Oh, it's on that side. Yep. Okay, I would have put it on the other side. There you go. Well, you would have had your so own glad variation. I have you here. Listen. That's you right. Just it's just a new your, pattern. I'll just be in your studio every time you make your little folks. <laughs> I would love that. I feel like the light comes on, like, oh, goody. We would have so much fun. <laughs> we would get nothing done. We would get nothing done. Well, we would, right, I think. We would. We'd probably really feed off each other creatively. Yeah. Have mm -hmm. to take crazy tricks together to inspire oh, ourselves. Oh, yes. You know. Tell my family, I'm going out of the country for creative reasons. All righty. All right, so press that open. I've got some more blocks over here. We're going to take it back to the quilt and look at where it goes in the quilt. See how cute is that? That is really cute. Look at this, you guys. We did it. And it's such basic blocks, but the so cute good. outlet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's look here. Uh, here we go. Right here. And then you turn and turn. And then for these up here, we're just putting the two sets together. So this will go here and another purple would go here. If it were mm -hmm. indeed purple, but mm -hmm. it is pink, as you see. Yep. The All layout right. is totally up to you. That's what's kind of fun about it. So, like, this is laid out where it makes kind of the center, and then you have your pieces on the top. But I've, I've done it where it just keeps making medallions. I mean, you could really, like, if you wanted to blow your mind, you could do a bunch of different <laughs> I layouts. actually looked at this yesterday, and I was just like, oh, my gosh. I'll, I could do, <gasps> yeah. Did you wake up in the night, really and you were fun. like, oh, my goodness. I always wake up in the night. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six blocks across by seven blocks down, mm -hmm. and that's 42 blocks in a layer cake. Mm -hmm. So that's the way this goes. We put it together, put the two matching pieces together and made the medallion, but of course you can do it. I think I'm pretty symmetrical, I've learned as I'm quilting, and oh. I think I almost would wanna do a bunch of these. Mm -hmm. Just the big block where they're all oh. together, yeah. you know, and yeah. do it kind of like Moroccan tile, but mm -hmm. to each his own. And I just, you know, I kind of fibbed to you earlier about this pattern, because you cannot get this anywhere. Only nope. here. It's exclusive oh, yeah. between us. Yeah, it's it's like our own little baby. It's our own baby. We yep. made this together. Well, she made it and gave it to me. So yep. that's but that's you made it great. <laughs> but we did the tutorial, <laughs> right? All right. So now it's your turn because we have this flimsy for sure. So and again, it let me need some magic. Well, I'm gonna do a little show and tell. I actually have another quilt that's a different layout. If you want to see it, Ooh, do you want to see that? Yes, I okay, do. Okay, let me go grab it. It's already quilted. All righty. All right, so this is the very original quilt that I wrote the pattern off of, but it just shows a slightly different layout, and then we can get to the quilting. Ooh, I love to see yeah. this. Shall we hold it up back here? Oh, sure, that probably Let's makes more that. sense. Let's do this. So this one, again, since the blocks are done in two, you can put them together to make groups, or you can lay them out separate. And here, oh my gosh, we kind of made that cool medallion, and it just kind of kept going with it. So really, really fun for layout placement. Um, you can do so much with it, so. So you guys, this is one of those really good lessons. A lot of times we see a quilt, we want to make it just like that, but this is one to play with the layout. All just the have some fun and enjoy it. Yep, all the blocks are the same size and they're square. So you can just rotate it, flip Whatever it around. Whatever you want to do. Use your imagination. But, all right, but this is how we laid it out. That's right. So we need and to quilt it. And now we're going to show you how to quilt it. Yes. All right. So you might notice there's nothing on the wall behind us. Has that ever happened on this show? No, I always have something hanging there. What's behind? <laughs> Everybody's always wondered what's behind the quilt. <laughs> that's, a, that's what's behind us, our oh, design wall. Interesting. So the quilt is right here and Angela is ready. She's put a, what do you call this? Free motion quilting foot. Free motion quilting foot. Thank heaven you're blue, here. Blue Jenny's mine. <laughs> She's like, the, the, the other foot has never come off of here. I'm like, come on baby, it's okay. I know, so I, I didn't thought, even know we had a foot. Yeah, you did. It took a while to find it, but you had it. Well, it was in a baggie, <laughs> in a drawer. We got it though. So I thought I would just do a little bit of quilting, show you what it looks like. Uh -huh. um, we've got the quilt sandwich stabilized. Okay. We made the quilt sandwich, you know, a lot of cussing, but Jenny was kind to like just yeah, let just, me not film that part, la, la, right? La, la, like, la, la, you know. <laughs> um, and to talk about it, I love machine quilting. That's kind of my thing. Just like, yeah. you know, piecing is your thing. And I, I realize though that not everybody loves it as much as I do. So do you have a trick for doing the sandwich though? Yeah, I like to use fusible batting. That's the trick. Oh, I like to use fusible batting because nice. I don't like the pins. You notice there's no pins here no or safety pins. Yeah. pins. 
Um, I don't like those because they're like speed bumps. As I get going, oh, okay. I don't want to stop and take them out. That's right. That's um, right. And so that's kind of how I do it. Although wh whatever mm -hmm. method your viewers like to use mm -hmm. or that you like to use is totally fine. Well, I've done little ones, you know, like for, for table runners mm -hmm. and things like mm -hmm. that. And I use the fusible or I use that powder that you yep. sprinkle yep, on. Yep, the bone ash. And I, I don't love the... Uh, Spray. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Yeah. It's just too everywhere. It gets everywhere. It's everywhere, yeah. yeah. But the other thing, too, is that you can actually take your big quilt top to a long arm quilter and she can baste it they on can. her machine. Yes, yes. And that is amazing. And, uh -huh. and a lot of long arms will do that they for will. you. And they then will. you can machine quilt and yep. it's all basted in. However, you get that sucker sandwich, just get it sandwiched right. and you can just get, get to the fun done. part, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and right. so I like to quilt on my sewing machine and my long arm. I, on the sewing machine, I kind of call it the smush and push, right? You just yeah. got to smush it in the machine, but mm -hmm. this has got a beautiful throat here and you're going to go for it. So. so do you let the fabric speak to you? Do you let the the open spaces. I mean, how is it that you come up with? Because yours is all really eclectic. It's yeah, just whatever yeah. you're feeling. Well, I keep waiting for quilt tops to speak to me, but they never do. They just don't. I, I, might, I might not be drinking enough you wine. Might drinking I don't know enough. what the no. trick is. Mm -hmm. But um, usually it's I look never going to work for me then because I don't drink it all. <laughs> well, chocolate. Get chocolate. Go. Just gorge on the chocolate. I have not, I've had you. enough symphony bars. Uh, that is it. That's right? it. I, I need more the dove, of those. The dove chocolate is like quilt more quilts. Oh, yeah. yeah I don't know. More quilts. I think mm -hmm. they should be that. Anyway, now when I'm looking at the quilt, which is the number one question, right? How do I quilt it? Um, I think what's the most important thing right. and how can I highlight it with the quilting? So I'm thinking, oh, I love the fabric. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. but you know, it's the pattern is usually what the pattern yeah, most often. Dictates. It could be the recipient. It could be the quilting. Um, but here, the most important thing to this quilt that I wanted to highlight was the layout. I love that medallion yeah. bit, and I want the quilting to kind of wrap around that. Awesome. And that doesn't mean that quilting has to be difficult to be impactful. So I'm going to maybe do some straight lines, maybe okay. some swirls. Always good with swirls. And I don't know. We'll just see where it takes us. All right. Let's sometimes do it. Sometimes you have a plan. Sometimes you just wing it, right? That's right. You can start anywhere you want on the quilt, really. It doesn't matter because I already have my quilt sandwich made. But mm -hmm. I'm going to start in the center because it's never harder than it is right there. Yeah, it's the heaviest point, and it, I with hand quilting, I start in the center and work yeah, my way out. Yeah, I'd rather mm -hmm. do the hardest part first. That way, when I get to the end of the quilt and I'm like, this thing is driving me nuts, it's a little bit easier. Yeah, so, I'll just start right here, and again, you know, pick a few different designs and think about how you're gonna play with them. You do have long legs. I do. Down it's way under there. All right, I'm gonna try not to go nuts with your machine because okay. it goes fast. But anyway, um, again, with the free motion, I've dropped the feed dogs. I now have put on that different foot and it's kind of like hovering over there and then my hands are driving, which is fun, right? So as it's quilting, it's moving. Oh my gosh, you're making swirls. Oh, yeah. I love swirls. It's a nice filler because it just kind of keeps it a nice texture, that consistent mm -hmm. spacing, but it's not overwhelming. And the trick, do you want to know the trick to great quilting, Jenny? Keep going. Keep going, but echo, echo, echo. Oh, okay. I want to make sure I fill in all the gaps. So what I'm going to do is if I get to an area where there is a, a gap, I'll just echo around and get to that point and fill it in. Very cool. And a lot of, you know, maneuvering, getting the quilt up out of here. Grabbing. And do you use any of the gloves or rulers? Do you have things that you like to use? I do. Yeah, I have all that stuff. I didn't bring it. I don't know why. That's all right. But I've got gloves and the Supreme what's good like to, What's good is that those things are helpful, but mm -hmm. if you don't have them, you can still do it. Absolutely. And I find that every quilter is different, mm -hmm. right? You ask 10 different quilters, they have 10 different preferences. Right. So, um, I use gloves, I think that's true with everything. Yeah, it doesn't It's matter. just how our brains work. Mm -hmm. Yep. Some people want all the tools. Some people are like, don't tell me. I don't want to do that. It's, it's totally up to you. All right. Now I've got onto a good rhythm. Do you have music you like to listen to when you do it? I do. I have really nice headphones that my husband got for me, and I love to listen to audiobooks. Oh, I do too. Yeah. Sometimes they're really good, and sometimes they're really trashy, <laughs> but I enjoy them all. Well, for me, if I have something going on in my brain, I can focus. Yes. Uh-huh. So. Oh, it's so true because I think sometimes our hands will do what they need to do if our the brain just memory. gets out of the way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just need to distract that critical side. And that's why I like wine. <laughs> right? It distracts the critical. I call it my quilting juice. It's my quilting <laughs> potion. Um, but it's just a lot of fun. I have to say, I was always the mom who, when I went to fill a baby bottle, the kids would run and bring me a, their bottle with a towel because they knew I was going to spill. I could <laughs> never have an open anything around my quilting. <laughs> everything has to have a cap because I'm knocking it over. True, I'm, you know. true. That would be tragic. Yeah, so I, I can't do the, mm -mm. or maybe I could just do white. That would work. A table behind you is the trick. So you table, reach yeah. over, you don't keep it on the next to the quilt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm probably not going to start drinking. That would be terrible. Ah, sorry. I'm getting, it's like driving somebody else's car, right? I get in and push the gas pedal. I love that you're doing it on my machine though because I didn't even know my machine would do this. Yeah. What's funny in classes, sometimes people will say like, oh, I'm having trouble. And I'm like, let me just try it. And then sometimes it's They're like, the user machine interface. Mm -hmm. There's something in between the two. It's um, generally just fear. 
Oh, for sure. And here's the thing. When you're piecing, like you want perfect points. Like you want that perfection, but then it's like, just have fun with the quilting. Right. Let go, relax. And people are like, shut up, Angela. It's not like that. <laughs> That's right. It, it's a totally different thing. So I always say perfectionists sometimes mm -hmm. struggle a little bit with it because they have this idea of perfection, but there's no such thing as perfection. And I always say finish is better than perfect. Yes, ma'am. And I always say like, you know, if you can kind of replace that perfect word with, with finish, or I just mm -hmm. want this quilt to be done, right. I think it's super important. But um, I'm not a perfectionist. I'm a people pleaser. It's Me a too. totally different neurosis. Totally study different. Yeah. yeah. It's still debilitating, but different way. So yeah. And using a matching thread color is very helpful, right? Because then you kind of covers up all those, you know, quilting. Mm -hmm. Well, nothing un is glaring. Unintentional customizations, <laughs> right? No mistakes in quilting. I love that. Unintentional customizations. Uh -huh, yes. Like we are not fabric quarters. We are curators. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Please. There's all these words to make it right. It's all. It's all in the presentation of it. That's right. Right? Like, That's right. it's all how you present it. I'll say the trick, Jenny, if you ever try machine quilting, which I think mm -hmm. you should, because it's a lot of fun, you have most control when your hands are on either side of the needle. Okay. My worst habit, because I have bad habits, is I'll start quilting, and the next thing you know, I'm using my, my oh, oh, your way, elbows, way out, yeah. right? That's, I need to stop and reposition, because I want to just go really fast, and so it's kind of nice to remember, don't well, have any bad habits And like I, I would do. think that it would be, um, I mean, obviously smart to start on a small project. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and even if you made some pra practice little blocks, you mm -hmm. could sandwich them, and you could just practice your lines or your swirls, yep. or, and then you could even put that together as a sampler quilt even. For sure, and I think as you get more comfortable, about a yard piece of fabric is a great size, because okay. you have to maneuver around, but mm -hmm. you don't have to, you know, deal with such a big piece of fabric. And it, it, when you're done, you have a finished piece, and then right. you can hang it on the wall or put sure. it in your dog bed, depending on how <laughs> you feel about it. It just depends, right? Depending on how you feel about it. <laughs> I love that. And then you can look at it later and be like, oh, look how far I've come yeah. from them. So. These are such cute little swirls. Thanks. They're my favorite. It's mesmerizing to watch machine quilting. I don't care who you are. It's like, you know, watching the fire or the ocean. But it's a lot of fun because it's just working your way around, repositioning, and just kind of enjoying the process, which I know sounds really silly because I'm on the other side and mm -hmm. I like it. People that aren't there might not enjoy it, but the process is fun, kind of. Well, it's, this is true. What's, it's true with anything. It's a learned skill, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, You know, for sure. I mean, we just practice and we get better and better. So be kind to yourself when you begin. Oh, for sure. I said talk to yourself as though you would talk to your teenage daughter, right? right. Or somebody that's very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> somebody it looks very good. Emotional. It looks great. That's um, great, honey. But it's going to be fun. So it's going to take me a little bit. I only got a little bit done. But you want to finish this up for me? Uh, no. No, I don't. Okay. I think you should do this. I, my love is piecing. All right. Well, <laughs> I'll get to go. And so All right. Well, I'm, I think I'll go have lunch then. <laughs> we'll see you later. Good All luck right, with this. Thanks. <laughs> Leave the lights on. Angela, that looks amazing. I just finished it. Even bound. I know. Well, you've been gone for two weeks, Jenny. Well, you are a champion. I'm telling you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so let's you. go over some of the different stitches that you used in here because this is really fun. Well, after you left, I thought, you know what? I better do this a little bit tighter, smaller. I love yeah. it. So a lot of dense quilting. And again, you can see kind of highlighting that sec you know, that secondary medallion yeah. Oh, in the gosh, center. yeah. Look what, how that makes that pop. Mm -hmm. Just makes Just it stand echoing. right up. Oh, and then I was thinking since Ginny's wearing a red shirt, I can highlight that or maybe I pull out a pop of a contrasting thread. Just a little bit of that red. I'm usually not one to advocate for contrasting thread, but every once in a while, it's just a Every once in a while, just cries a for it. Hint. Yeah. And I think the best thing about machine quilting is you can just pick a bunch of different designs and have fun with it. It doesn't have to be serious. It doesn't have to be it's like gorgeous. well thought out. So I thought, you know, let's do some geometric kind of dot to dot quilting just to highlight the angular piece of the block. Yeah. But then we know I love swirls. Yeah. I love swirls. Do like you? you love layer cakes. Awesome. I mean, it's like my go-to. So just a nice all over texture. And, and I thought after you left, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll make them nice and tight and small and, and have fun with that. Yeah, and they're a little bigger up mm -hmm. here. And yep. so, yep, yep. that's and perfect. The question is always like the blocks and the fabrics. Well, I know that you picked out the fabric for this quilt. So I didn't want the quilting inside the fabric to be anything overwhelming or, yeah. you know. So in the fabric, I just did a nice plume feather um, just to give it a nice texture and, and have fun with it. But oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Honestly, it, it starts and stops at the same point so I can quickly move on and get right? have fun with it. And then this, I love this Thanks. little border. And, you know, wishbones and just adding some echo lines. 
you know, and again, like you can have a plan before you get started, but if you need to change it, you can. That's, it's a lot of fun. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Thanks. Thank you Thank so you. much. I love Thank that you. you did it. Yeah, well, I was glad to do it for you. Angela, this has been amazing. I love Thank the you. quilt. I love you. I love. I can't believe I'm on your set. Like, this well, we've been, been having so treat. much fun. It's been a treat for me as well. Don't forget, this is the All Roads pattern. It's exclusive to Missouri Star, thanks to Angela. Mm -hmm. uh, designed by her and quilted by her. Well, yours won't be, but you know. You can do this, they right? They definitely do they it. So could you, Jenny. So All right. I'm going to try it. I'm really going to try it. <laughs> anyway, we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the All Roads quilt from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Hi, everybody. It's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.